prepared two completely different sermons with two completely different sets of readings in preparation for whatever was going to happen. Now that we are here, and, if I, and I have had a few days to process my own feelings, let me share what I'm actually feeling in this moment. I am scared. No, I'm terrified. I am a person that is used to having all the answers and I have no way to even begin to predict what is going to happen next or what the future will look like. I am worried. I am worried for myself, my family, and the rest of my LGBTQIA2S plus community who have been targets since long before the election even began and who are likely to be one of the first on the chopping block. I am worried for those of you in the congregation who are struggling to process what it all means. I am grateful that I now live in California where many of my rights and protections are actually safeguarded in our state constitution and state laws. And I recognize the privilege with which that comes. I am worried for folks back in my former home state of Texas who are already living with the reality of having most of their protections taken away from them and who are feeling utterly hopeless now. And I am wondering who all is not safe and who all will be next. And yet, I have been in social justice and community organizing work for long enough in my short life that I know that there are always those who are waiting to come into power who will be quick to roll back any hard-earned or hard-fought civil rights with the signature of a pen or a majority decision of the Supreme And so, in the most twisted of ways, I know that I have been here before more times than I would like. So I say, here we go again, pick myself up and find some way of moving forward and continuing to do the work, even if I have to dig my fingers into the earth and crawl in order to do it. Whatever you are feeling, it is okay. We are not here to rush through those feelings or to leap too quickly to solutions. The work of this moment, the sacred task of today is to be honest about where we are and to remind ourselves that we do not stand alone. This faith teaches us that no matter what happens in the public square, we belong to each other. We walk together and in the shelter of community, we find strength. The work of elections is never the end of the story. It is only one chapter in a much longer narrative. Regardless of the outcome, the work of building a just, compassionate, and inclusive world continues. This is one of the core truths of our faith. No single event can define us. No matter how things appear today, the story of tomorrow is still unfolding, and we are and must be a part of that unfolding.
Unitarian Universalism calls us into active participation in the creation of a better world, not only through our political engagement, but through our daily lives. We are called to embody the values we cherish, even when it feels difficult. Love, justice, compassion, truth. These are not just ideals to be spoken about. They are practices to live. Our tradition teaches us that hope is not passive. Hope is simply wishing that things will get better on their own. Hope is not simply wishing that things will get better on their own. Hope is the conviction that with effort and courage, change is possible. It is the belief that even when the road is long, the journey is worth taking. It is the choice to act again and again in the service of love. Dr. Cornell West reminds us, justice is what love looks like in public. Let me say that again. Justice is what love looks like in public. Justice is love made visible through action. And so our call is not only to feel hope or find a way to feel hope, even if it's hard, but to practice hope, to live in a way that reflects the world we long to see. But as we move forward, from this moment, we must also remember to care for one another. There are those in our community who are hurting, those who feel vulnerable or afraid. There are those who are exhausted from the work of advocacy and those who are unsure where to begin. There are those who celebrate and those who mourn. Our task is to meet one another with compassion, to be gentle with ourselves when we are weary, to practice radical hospitality in our hearts, welcoming both the joy and the pain of this moment without judgment. This is where our faith shines. We show up for one another. We listen deeply. We share burdens. And we remind each other that no one has to walk this road alone. This community is a place where all are welcome, where every voice matters, and where love has the final word. The Reverend Howard Thurman once wrote, don't ask what the world needs. Ask what makes you come alive and go do it because what the world needs is people who have come alive. As we move forward, let us encourage one another to come alive in ways that nourish our spirits. Let us find the practices, the conversations, the acts of service that light a spark within us and let that light shine in the world. We are part of a long tradition of people who have worked for change even when the odds were against them. We stand on the shoulders of those who fought for civil rights, for peace, for equality. We are connected to generations past, present, and future, each of us adding our voice to the great chorus of humanity. Let us choose hope not just today, but every day. Let us choose to believe that the work we do matters, even when it feels small and insignificant. Let us choose to believe that love has the power to heal and transform, even when the way is unclear. Hope is not a destination, it is a practice. And together, we will practice it day by day, step by step, until the world we dream of becomes the world that we actually live in. May we cause it to be so. Blessed be. Amen. Shalom. Assalamu alaikum. Namaste.
May we carry the flame of love forward, lighting the way for ourselves and others. Thank you all so much, and thank you for being in and a part of this.